Albert Einstein once said, nothing will end the war unless the people themselves refuse to go to war. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the anti-war protests in Italy and what does it mean within the bigger picture of not only the Ukraine war, but also the energy crisis. My name is Dr. David Wallalu. And my name is Elizabeth Ann Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. As the war in Ukraine nears nine months, Italians are marching through the streets of Rome. Per la pace non servono armi, servono politica ciò funzionale. They're calling for peace in Ukraine, but also for their country to stop sending Kiev weapons to fight off Russia's assault. All right, what's going on with that issue? Well, or so this is a multifold issue, and we're looking at protests in Italy right now um, over the arms that have recently been sent to the Ukraine. So this is arms aid, weapons aid that is being sent from Italy to Ukraine to continue the Ukrainian conflict. Mm. The major problem with what's happening right now is that this conflict has all but destroyed the European economy in some very serious ways. And not only the European economy, but also the whole world for that matter, because mm -hmm. of the energy aspect. And if you know anything about economy, is that energy is at the heart of every, every economy. You know, I've been looking at it from now, how much, for example, Indonesia, even Indonesia, believe it or not, mm -hmm. they just made a decision today, they're going to go ahead with purchasing oil from Russia, despite and, what the West are saying. And they're not alone, right? No, they're, they're not. not alone. They're not. It's, it's a, it's a cost-benefit analysis. That's the reason why they're doing it. Absolutely. So there's demonstrations in Italy now. The, 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 the key question about all this is, not only now, you used to hear about... Uh, people demonstrating because of the cost is going mm -hmm. up, which is true still till today. Absolutely. But this one is more about now anti-war. It's almost like it's, ma in my opinion, this is my personal mm -hmm. opinion, it's almost like sending a message to NATO. Yeah. We've had it. We've had it. That's, that's to me what it represents. So I want to bring up the reaction that mm -hmm. the Italian Prime Minister, Georgia Maloney, had. Because interestingly enough, she is... She's fully supporting this war. It's very interesting what she said on the platform, mm -hmm. what she said necessarily to get elected versus what's happening right now with her support. What do you think of that? Well, what politicians say on public versus what they say privately mm -hmm. is two, two opposite ends. As one who worked in Washington, D.C., and we used to be sort of briefed on certain things before the president always said something. Mm -hmm. And usually it will be two extremes on one end from the other. So Georgia Maloney had to say what she had to say, because remember, uh, Italy is one of the founding members of NATO and yeah. the EU, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the European Union. Of course, she has to sort of publicly toe the line, shall we say, because you, you got to remember, for the United States, we have naval bases in Italy and so forth. But behind the scenes, it's a different story altogether. Because there are some policies that Georgia Maloney is, is embarking on that are against EU's wishes. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, for example, immigration. Absolutely. There so. There's a boat recently that, um, that she sent to France instead of landing in Italy. Oh, there is, there is a rift now between mm -hmm. France and Italy. Well, what I found very interesting about the demonstrations in Italy is the... I took a look at them and uh, read them from the Italian newspapers mm -hmm. and Italian media and so forth. And the banners, what it says there, and they were in Italian. And I will share with you guys uh, uh, one particular one in Italian language, in its original uh, uh, language and it says this and I quote here Pio Praccia por Praci non po guerre which translates basically to more arms for hugs no more wars and this to me yeah. it's an indication of really what Italians now want you know over the last few years yeah. it's been nothing but stress right it's one stress after the next stress after the war after the the word that i won't say here I know. but yeah. um it's just been one stress after another and i think people overall have reached sort of a peak with it you can only stay stressed out 
under some form of extreme conflict for a limited amount of time. Yeah. So human beings, you know, even in movies, the movies that stay stressful the entire time, people stop watching them. And the reason is because we can't stay stressed out all the time. It's mm -hmm. not healthy for our nervous system and our bodies have to relax at some point, even if it's for a small amount of time or to decrease the stress. Mm -hmm. And so I think people are really hitting a point where they're, they're, the stress is nonstop and it's been nonstop for years. And it's an extremely unhealthy way to live. So I'm actually very happy to start seeing people waking up. And sometimes it takes an enormous amount of pain to wake someone up out mm -hmm. of a daze. Well, it's certainly it's across Europe now because when mm -hmm. you take into consideration what's taking place in the neighboring countries like Spain, yeah, like France, like England, yeah. Spain had a fifty thousand person protest recently, looking at the the impact of inflation because mm. for Italy inflation is at eleven point nine percent, which is kind of a big deal. It's a really big problem, and you look at purchasing power and that's one of the things that always bothers me about policy and that is when they looked at embarking on this on the support for the for the ukraine yeah, right yeah. did they did the governments of the world that are not directly involved in this right mm -hmm. because there are two there are two countries that are directly involved in it but there are many other countries who are supporting in different ways did they do an analysis beforehand on what the cost would be to do this do you want the answer? I, I well, think I know the answer. <laughs> well, the answer they did. Yeah. They did. However, certain entities were forced to mm -hmm. act. And I can guarantee you this, knowing what I know, yeah. is that for the European Union, they were forced to act that way. Yeah. This is why it explains, for example, why Olaf Scholz just went to China by mm -hmm. himself. Why French President Macron now is talking nicely to the president of Venezuela, Maduro. Mm -hmm. It's because energy. Yep. You know, this is why you're seeing this kind of uh, a, a move. I won't call it a movement, but just a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. This is why you're seeing this type of demonstrations going on. And now they are between the two lines, two parallels, if I, were, if, if I may say this. One is economic mm -hmm. and the other one is political. Yep. So this one in Italy, even though it's political, it still has the economic connotation to it. Hugely yeah. so, yeah. hugely so. And the reason being because the skyrocketing energy prices mm -hmm. in Italy, Italians Absolutely. are now questioning the judgment of their government by extending the support militarily to Ukraine. Yep. Because they are saying, they, Italian people, are saying that this support it's taking away from the programs that's yeah. supposed to support Italians. Absolutely. Yeah. And Italy, this is not the first time Italy has come into hot water economically. No. And, but it is a very serious one. So with energy specifically, especially as winter comes in, mm -hmm. Europe is in a very challenging spot in terms of energy. If people cannot pay for, for electricity during, or pay for gas during the winter, that is a survival and quality of life problem. And it turns out that when people's survival is at stake, they... Uh, <laughs> they embark they on take whatever it a little, survival. Yes, they That's take it a little more survival. seriously. So, you know, actually, there is one thing. Uh, uh, if I, I'll share mm -hmm. the story with our viewers. In the military, yeah. we have to go through certain types of training. There is one thing known as SEER school. Mm -hmm. uh, SEER school is survival, evasion, and recon. Okay. So usually you have to learn how to survive in yeah. whatever environment yeah. with whatever is available to you. So if mm -hmm. you have to learn how to create water out of the leaves of a tree because it's raining, yeah. then that's what you survive on. Yeah. If you have to figure out what's going on in the ground to eat something, that's what you're going to mm -hmm. do. So survival, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Of course, this is from a civilian perspective it is but yeah. is it it's from a civilian perspective in in a sense you know in a sense we're very comfortable in the western world mm. you know we're not used to things being too expensive we're not used to having things like you know heat or cool being taken away from us right the outlooks for next year are pretty bleak i think i think everyone across the globe now we're starting to hear it from some of the world's biggest leaders that a recession yeah. is very much coming 
Um, and so we're looking at now, and, and this, is, this is the reason we do this show, right? So we're looking at a circumstance where it's not going to be the same over and over again. Now things are actually changing. And we had, um, we had a guest last year on. Mm -hmm. We had Peter Schiff on last year as a guest here. So if you guys want to check out that episode, it's in the monetary policy uh, playlist. Mm -hmm. But he, he talked about if you want to buy something right now, a year ago, is the time to buy it, right? Not this. because it's going to get more expensive. And what happened? It, it got more expensive. expensive. Yeah. Everything got more expensive. And so if you can plan things like that, if you can take a look and say, okay, well, so this is what we're headed towards next year. So part of part of what's happening in Italy is in 2023, next year, the projection is pretty bleak. So it's a flat line of growth, flat line to negative growth in Italy next year. What does that mean, right? So third quarter, there was a little bit of a bump, but fourth quarter, it went back down. And so now it's negative again. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking at what does that actually mean you need to prepare for if you are in the EU, if mm -hmm. you are in Italy. And even the European Central Bank saying that, well, next year is going to be a recession in Europe. Absolutely. They're just lying. The recession is already, it's already here. here. Absolutely. They're just giving a lip service Absolutely. to people. And speaking of the videos, we also have a course that addresses this yes. kind of issues because we kind of realizing that we won't have enough to say on this. So we decided to do this uh, in, in, in a course, basically, we have, we just yeah. completed that one. It is. And it's completed now. And there's a community that goes along with it. It's called No Nonsense Politics. Check it out in the link. Link in the description below. box not, below. Not How it's about below. That? below. Uh, <laughs> but below. you're absolutely yeah. right. Because the thing is, it's, it's, it's one thing to know this stuff, right? People are, at least in the United States, the protests are not being, protests are almost never publicized here unless there's a specific reason for it. Yeah. So the protests in Italy, people aren't talking about it. The protests in Spain, people aren't talking about it. The protests in France, people aren't talking about it. What they are talking about, though, is Sean Penn giving his Oscar to Zelensky. Which is pathetic. Yes, it is. I'll say it straightforward. Yes. And we'll, we'll do an episode we, we, sort we, of breaking we, down political theater. <laughs> we need to because yes. Americans, if you happen to be an American viewer, you need to understand the meaning of something. It has nothing to do with the welfare of Americans. So that's just no. pure theater. You know, here, here are people going on doing this kind of stuff while the American people are suffering. Absolutely. I am sure if you are an Absolutely. American... I'm sure you lo you noticed how your finances are have been changed within the last year. And this is not just here in the US, it's, it's around the world. We will do a video on it because yep. there is a lot that Americans need to know. Yes. They need to understand that. Absolutely. And so, uh, so Ross and I are going to do that episode, but our course is geared around um, sort of helping you guys understand what is most important to pay attention to and figuring out how to make a plan for yourself going forward because the world is changing whether people want it or not. Oh yes, it is indeed. So, so to go back to this uh, Italian aspect of it, mm -hmm. and uh, I, it is my belief, and I made some calls to Europe, to some people I know. Yeah. So I made phone calls and asked questions. They are there on the yeah. ground and they are telling me that People are getting fed up, and I'll use the term that. They're so. getting fed up because they start to realize, okay, is something going on here that the uh, policymakers who they voted for are acting against their will? Yeah. Which leads to the natural question. Yeah. Are they being forced to act that way, or are okay. they stupid? <laughs> you know, because right. you don't like to use that term. No, but it's true. And that, yeah. you're absolutely right. That is always the question that comes up is, is this incompetence or is this corruption? Which thing is it? Yeah. Is it that somebody is being forced to do this or are they so wildly incompetent? And I think sometimes it's a mix of both. Yeah. But um, I think in this case, if, if you look at any situation that is so heavily publicized, you always have to ask yourself the first question. You always have to ask yourself what's actually going on underneath. Like Ross said, the news behind the news. The news behind the yeah, news. Yeah. And the other aspect to all this, to put it within the bigger picture of the European uh, landscape, you look at now the, the massive demonstrations in England. Yes. And those are not pertaining to anti-war, but rather you look at our nurses now going on a strike because mm -hmm. they are requesting an increase in pay. Yeah. 
Why is that? It's pay. because the inflation. Inflation. And yet, mm-hmm. the British government <laughs> is embarking on some ill-conceived policies, no different than what we do here in the U.S. Absolutely. You know, you look at just the, the outcome of the midterm elections, which, by the way, they have not confirmed anything yet, which uh, makes me wonder, in a democracy, there is a week since we had, or I, a few days. I'll but... say this. There was... Um, Oh man, there was there was a man who was elected as a, a it was he was a Democratic candidate and he had passed away, and they didn't take his name off of the ballot, oh. and oh. he won that election oh. and he had passed away last month, so he had he had already he God rest his soul but he had already passed away for an entire month and his constituents I guess didn't know. But it, he was not taken off the ballot. His name wasn't taken off the ballot. That's very and problematic. It's very problematic. It was in Pennsylvania. Um, and this, this, this man who had passed away mm-hmm. actually won. Um, but he had not just passed away. It had been almost a full month. And so there's some very strange things going on with the election system because under no circumstances should that have been allowed to happen. Yeah. Well, and it makes you just wonder about the whole thing about our American system. Absolutely. Because it is time for us to say it straightforward that it needs a top-to-bottom review. I think it many people time. are saying that, yeah. Americans need yeah. to really wake up. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, like, you know, are they blind? Can mm-hmm. they see what's going on? And yet... I agree. You know, but at the same time, you find it very convenient that uh, the... the Government, our governments find it very convenient that when you distract the masses, Mm -hmm. you keep them busy with other stuff. Because there is one thing I've learned over the years that if you become well informed, you become a threat to the government. Yep. Well, and now a lot of people are, though. A lot of people are are becoming much, much better informed. Yeah. Um, And and we're here to help do that. Well, this is one of the things that I'm sure we all of us as a team, even those the ones behind the scenes that Mm -hmm. they want to remain anonymous, by the way. So uh, we all we all take pride in what we do here because that becomes the question. As I always say, what is our objective? Mm -hmm. What is our purpose in life to begin with? So why are we doing all this for? You know, if, if you couldn't help other human being get at least better understanding of mm-hmm. what's going on, so he or she can at least start to think outside the box. Yeah. That, that's to me what the objective is all about too, is to help people understand and create some sort of clarity mm-hmm. for them to see. Because there's a lot of information coming from different directions. And that's ultimately the point. There's a lot of information coming yeah, from different yeah, directions. Yeah, it's too much for how much people yeah. can handle. Yep. You know, our brain can only process so much. You know? Right. And it's it's an overload. It's an yeah. information overload. So check out No Nonsense Politics because that's one of the things we help you out with in our course. Um, I want to mention one more thing, and that is Italy got downgraded. So the Italian economy got mm-hmm. downgraded. So kind of going back to Italy for one oh, yeah, second before we, oh, before we uh-huh. it's important to have these types of conversations. But um, so Italy actually got downgraded. Moody's, which is an assessment Moody, firm, yeah. um, slashed the assessment of Italy's banking system from stable to negative. Oh, and that's, that's a really not, big deal. That's not good. <laughs> um, and it said it, is, it expects the conditions for the banking sector to deteriorate further over the next year. And so it's already negative. It's not stable anymore. It's already negative. And when, your bank, when the banking system in a country becomes negative, that becomes a really big problem. So there was actually a series of downgrades for Italy. Um, they downgraded in medium growth prospects for the Italian economy, from the Bank of, of Italy, Italy's National Institute of Statistics, Italian business lobby organization, mm. Confindustria, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and the European Commission. So wow. even though the preliminary figures showed economic growth in the third quarter, it is showing negative growth in the fourth quarter and uh, basically flatline for next year. So just some, a really important piece of information because as the banking systems start to fail, there, there's, a, there's indications of a really big problem. The people that are protesting in the streets are not protesting for no reason. There's a very no. strong economic reason for people in Italy to be very upset no. at the way that everything has been handled. Um, and they have very little say. They no. have very little say in, in what's going on. 
And those people that have that been demonstrating in Italy, mm -hmm. that includes trade unions. Absolutely. That includes student groups. Mm -hmm. And that includes also uh, cultural associations. Yeah. And you know who was among them? It was Conti. If you know oh, who Conti yeah, is, absolutely. well, Conti used to be a head of a government in Italy. He's mm -hmm. now in the opposition. You yes. Know. And he's, you know, when you have something like this, it gives you an idea of the magnitude of, and yet we don't hear about that here. In, absolutely. You know, our and mainstream media doesn't even talk about this. Kind no. Of stuff. So Conti actually also is against sending more arms to Ukraine. Yeah, he's not. He's not in favor of that. He's and against the whole sending more weapons. Well, it's because they are realizing there is the other arguments to all this. And the mm -hmm. argument is this, that some will say, OK, we are getting short on our weapons. For example, in yeah. Italy, there are those who might argue that because yeah. how much weapon can you send? Abs That's a great yeah, question. Yeah. How many weapons does Italy have to send? And I actually have that question. How yeah. much arms does they, Italy have to send to the Ukraine? Don't have, yeah. And if they don't have it in their stockpile, where is it coming from? Well, this is why... Isn't that an interesting question? It is, it is, but I might have an answer for you. This okay. is why Europeans are moving to buying weapons from South Korea, but not the United States. We mm, can, uh, interesting. Yes. There's a, there's a show coming up on that soon, I yeah. think. Oh, I guess we divulged that yes. beforehand. <laughs> well, now you know. So, But it is indeed, because Europeans are moving into that direction. Absolutely. Because the shortage. Yeah. They are very concerned. But also... Because Italians, the reason why these demonstrations, mm -hmm. they want this anti-war, because they are realizing the more Italians send weapons, mm -hmm. the longer the, the, longer it the is. conflict Absolutely. it drags on. They yeah, want to end the conflict to begin with. Yep. And this is why Conti is calling for, it is time to negotiate with the Russians. Yep. You know? And of course... Ukraine can't do that because Ukraine doesn't have any say into all this. Yeah. A lot of people do not understand. Ukraine may be a sovereign. It's a sovereign on papers. And no more, no less. Didn't, I just passed, their budget just passed with, I think, a $37 billion deficit. Yeah. And they are so, asking for $18 billion from the EU. Mm -hmm. Where that money is going to come from? From the program of the people. And exactly. this is what Italians now are demonstrating yep. on in Spain, in France, in yep. England. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is a new demonstrations in uh, Czech Republic, in Prague. Yeah. They've been there. Those are in Moldova. And, uh, you know, it's just mm -hmm. we don't hear much about all this. Uh, for us here in the U.S., uh, makes you just wonder why Americans are... Uh, usually for us Americans, because we've been so comfy... Yep. It still it hits that, the wall very hard. Yep. Then you will see a different reaction I, for now. Absolutely. And for the Europeans, it is hitting that wall. Well, for yeah, the Europeans, when, they are hitting that wall. Yeah. And I think for us, we're not going to see anything. I've, I've said this about four months ago. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with someone. And I mentioned, you will see more demonstrations and protests in Europe before you see them yep. here in the U.S. And yep. if there is any change... It's going to happen in Europe yeah, before the change over here. Yep. And, that's, well, and you were right. So far, that's what I'm mm -hmm. seeing. Because uh, like I always say, watch for the trends. Absolutely. Because that's what it is. And that's exactly what we do in the course. Because we wanted to help our yeah. members to understand how to spot the trends. Absolutely. Because once you spot the trends, you will understand mm -hmm. what lies ahead, what's coming. So you can prepare. Absolutely. Otherwise, it will hit you like a massive wave. And just watch over you. Absolutely. So, any final thoughts before we close this out? Uh, just that it is. It gives me a lot of hope. Yeah. It gives me a lot of hope that people don't want war anymore. That people want something better for the world. Because I believe very much, and I've met a lot of people, and so I know that this may be a very controversial way to think, but I actually really believe in humanity. I actually really believe that people, overall, a person is good. And together, people may be <laughs> kind of crazy, but an individual person for the most part is good and that people are mostly trying to do the best they can. And that gives me a lot of hope. Yeah, well, as a former military myself, war is not a good thing. It's I not. can tell you just this from experience. War is not a good thing because nothing good has come out of it. Uh, and you might think, what well, there is a winner. There's no winner in war. Well, and one, just, of, one of the things we go over in our course actually has to do with the fact that you know, most of the wars that people embark on are not meant to have a winner and a loser. They're meant to maintain trade routes. 
They're yeah. meant to maintain a particular uh, status quo for industry. And so even if there is a winner and a loser or whatever that is, ultimately everybody loses. And so it gives me a lot of hope yeah, that yeah. Um, maybe we we'll need to do a video on this. Yeah, especially for American good. audience to understand what's going on. You know, yeah. And, so. and speaking of that, do you know today is a Veterans Day? Happy Veterans well, Day, David. Thank you. Yeah, but you know, as I always say, we gotta thank all the veterans. If you Absolutely. happen to be an American watching this, but here is the thing: if we truly want to show them our thanks, mm -hmm. is because we have to demonstrate to them that we Americans are worth fighting for yeah we deserve we deserve that and we deserve peace around uh, the world yeah. right now we so really deserve it that's uh that's that's the way i look at it so absolutely anyway well we look forward to seeing you next time of course as always prepare yourself for a changing world order till next time bye-bye